Hello everyone, Dolphin Oracle here again tonight, and tonight we're going to show off uh, installing MX23. And it's been a while since I've made a video about anything related to MX, uh, but we're going to go ahead and do an installation video. I'm running here, this is actually the KDE version, the Plasma version of MX running. I've done most of my other videos with the XFCE version, but I thought it'd be fun to do uh, a different desktop this time. Uh, so as I do my next series, you may see me on different desktops, but most of what we'll be talking about is desktop agnostic, as in it doesn't matter. So anyway, we're going to launch the installer. And it's going to go through and do its media check. Now, what I am running right now is a live USB. It has a few applications already installed on it, one of which is my little camera viewer down here, and then also the recording software, and a few other things that I like for my own personal use. All those applications, when you do an install from a customized live USB, all those applications that you've installed, anything on the root file system, will show up on the final installed system. So here we are, we got, we got the usual help text over here, we got change your keyboard settings, mine are correct, I set them with the live system already. If I go here to the live log, it's going to show you the commands that are being run. Let's just make this thing bigger, huh? There we go. So, uh, so you can kind of see it's kind of nerd nerd porn, right? You can see what's going on behind the scenes if you want to. But the help text is there for those of you that need a little help getting your installation going. So we'll do the next. Now this will explain to you all the options that are going to happen. There are two modes of installation. Uh, Normally, uh, the the all-in-one nuke everything on whatever disk you select here. This will wipe everything out and make what uh, a new file system on the disk is going to make. If it's a UEFI system, like 99% of all new PCs in the last 10 years, uh, it's going to make an ESP partition for you. It's going to make a root partition. It's not going to make a swap partition. It's actually going to make a swap file on the inside the root partition. So you just basically going to get one big partition. Okay, it's easy enough to understand. Or you can drag this little slider here and you can see that it's going to make part of that a home. So this way you'll get a root, a home. If it's a UEFI machine, you will get a ESP partition and Grub will automatically install to that ESP partition. Uh, the installer will default that way if the USB has been booted in whatever boot mode. So if it booted in legacy, it will do a legacy install. If it booted UEFI, it will boot a, it will do a UEFI install. Okay. If you want to encrypt the drive, you can do that, and you'll get the options uh, for username and password. I'm not going to encrypt this time. Uh, enable hibernation support just has to do with the size of the swap file. The swap file will be a smaller unless you enable hibernation support, where I believe it, it will add whatever size RAM you have will be the, the size of the hibernation file. Maybe a little bigger because it assumes part of it's in use. Um, I'm not going to do these things. I'm going to do the. But anyway, that's how you would do it if you were doing the regular install. It is kind of no fuss, no muss. You hit next, it does everything for you. Um, if you go to customize disk layout, except it will ask for username and password. If you go to customize the disk layout, so this is a real machine, real hardware. I'm installing on my production machine from a live USB, so I need to be careful what partitions I install to. So we get this. N not. Totally under, hard to understand uh, partition selection area, but it is different than a lot of other Linux uh, installers would be using. But once you get the hang of it, it's actually really fast and really easy. So we come here. It's, these are a list of all the partitions on my on my production machine. You can see some of them have names because I have installations already. These guys here with BitLocker, the, these guys system. This is actually the Fat32. This is actually the ESP partition here. Uh, then we have a 16 megabyte. That's some weird ass partition for Windows, and then uh, or maybe possibly uh, Lenovo. And then we have this P3 245 gigabytes. That is the BitLocker. That's the Windows partition. The rest of these are uh, open for grabs. So uh, 30 gigabyte, part uh, 70 gigabyte partition is my production install. So I'm not going to touch that one. I'm going to install onto one of these 30 gig ones here. 
Um, so I'm going to slap this on here and say I'm going to use that for root. And you can give it a name. And I'm going to make this uh, K, make that MX23 KDE, so I can tell them part. You can give them whatever format you want. There's several to choose from. I tend to stick with EXT4. Now we do have the preserve. It's a little hard to see. Let me see if I can make that uh, a little bit wider. Yeah. So if you click this preser preserve, let's say you're form installing over top of another MX or another, and actually anything with a with a root folder in it. Um, you can choose to preserve it if it was a one partition system with home on that partition it will wipe out everything except slash home which might be handy now back up your data don't be stupid but also that's what this is designed for it will delete everything on the drive except everything that's under slash home and as long as your usernames are the same as what's in there it will offer to reuse the home folders that it finds in that slash later on in the user configuration. Anyway, I'm being a little wordy. If you got a home that's on there already, preserve it. Fine. If I wanted to make a different partition home, I can do that. Um, now, it defaults to preserving it, but I'm actually not going to do that. I was just showing you the installer. So we're not going to use that partition for anything. Uh, this is a data partition. I'm not going to use Steam Games is 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 not something I want to target. All these other partitions. Aha! This eight gigabyte one is labeled swap. I want to make this one my also the swap. So the one nice thing about using a, uh, the old standard swap partition is that more than one installation can technically use the same swap partition. So that's what I'm going to do because I have uh, the system set up with the partitions that I want. Now I mentioned that I need a ESP partition. This guy here is my ESP partition. Okay, so I am going to click next. Now this thing is going to show you exactly what's going to happen. We're going to reuse, no reformat, that first partition as the ESP. That's right. We're going to use this partition 6 on my NVMe drive for root. That's what I selected. And we're going to reuse, no reformat, the swap partition. Now that's kind of important. You can reformat it if you want to. But if you don't reformat, if you do reformat it, then all anything that's using it, any other installed systems that are using it, uh, the drive identifier will be incorrect after the reformat So um, in their FS tab files. So keep it the same as what I normally do. And we're going to start. This is the Grub installation screen, but you can already see copying is going on. Uh, we're going to install Grub. Yep, I can install it to an MBR if I want to. I can override the choice. I don't want to. PBR, the partition boot record, is interesting. If you already have a, a Grub installation from another insta in Linux installation that you want to let control everything, that you don't want MX's Grub to control your boot menu when you first start up the computer. I suggest uh, you cannot install Grub, but I suggest installing Grub to the PBR instead, the partition boot record. That will avoid the ESP, that will avoid the MBR, and it will let you have a Grub installation on the MX installation that other Grubs are almost certain to pick up. Um, sometimes they won't unless there's something something there. It's kind of a foolproof. Uh, but I'm installing to the ESP. It already knows what the ESP is, so fine. Now, I selected a swap file in the partition chooser. However, I can make a swap file. Now, if I hadn't selected a swap partition, this would have been the default, and it would let me choose a size, and again, you can hit and enable hibernation support, and it would do its thing. But I am not creating a swap file uh, because I already have the swap partition. But a lot of people like these files. That is how you set up the file size. So we'll click next. You'll notice too, uh, the partition I'm installing to doesn't actually have enough for this. This machine has a lot of RAM, okay? And this partition is not big enough to have a swap partition big enough, to, a swap file big enough to have hibernation 100% for certain. Okay, so we'll click next. Now you see it's already paused. It's already done copying. It's waiting for me to finish the setup. So you give it whatever name you want. Uh, KDE 23. Uh, uh, we'll call it video install here just to give it a name that I can remember. And then you can give it a domain name. Now, it, unless you're in a computer domain, this doesn't matter. Um, I'm just going to call it MX. 
and then uh, but if you're in a domain you'll want to get that domain name from from your domain and put it here it will help with setup of the domain later uh, and then Samba for MS networking at Samba shares that's the classic Windows file sharing uh, system I, I'm not going to have a server on this computer so I don't need it not having the Samba server active on your desktop does not mean you can't access Samba shares hosted somewhere else that's a different functionality this is just the server so this machine is a laptop I'm not doing any shares from this machine I can access my, my shares from the other room okay next this is your locale information. Now this all happens to be right for me, but you can choose whatever you want and you can see it's nicely uh, languaged, uh, localized uh, and all that. Uh, my local time is good. You can choose 24 hour or 12 hour. Um, if, you if you share with Windows, you might want to do this. I actually forced my Windows install to use UTC so I don't have to deal with it um, anymore. And then on view here, you can look at all the services that you might want to enable or disable. You might be interested in enabling ZRAM swap if you're into that kind of thing. If you don't know what it is, don't worry about it. If you want to know what it is, Google it because that's not the source of this video. Anyway, I tend to leave the uh, services alone, but a lot of people like to tweak that sort of thing. Uh, then we're going to go with next, and it's your classic username setup. Okay, my password's whatever I want it to be, and if you don't like it, tough cookies. Uh, it, you do not have to set up a root administrator account. Now, this is a Debian system, and this is a difference between Debian installer and ours. If you set up a root account, it's going to get rid of the sudo group uh, on Debian, and so everybody would have to use this, this, the su password. We always set up the first user with sudo privileges so no matter what you select here sudo is going to work on the on the fresh install this is just the extra root account I actually have gotten used to not having it so I'm gonna leave it off I like auto login so I'm gonna leave auto logging on I'm not gonna save any desktop changes because I want to start with a fresh uh, install um, uh, video, uh, uh, a fresh user setup on KDE and I'll customize from there this is kind of left over from a uh, another video that I did uh, so now it's now that all the information's in, it has continued. It is installing Grub. We get the little get the little progress bar up here. And um, it will wrap up shortly. So here we are, installation's complete. We're ready to have the box here to automatically reboot the system when the installer is closed. So as soon as I click finish, do a quick reboot, be back in the installed system. And there we are back with the desktop. And like I said, I reset the desktop. So I got the default wallpaper. I got the default stuff down here. But if we look up the menu here and we go to multimedia, we're going to see a few things. GovC view. We're going to see a simple screen recorder. These were things that I already pre-installed before I started the video because they are recording off the live USB. So that's installing MX23. For tips, tricks, how-tos, head over to mxlinux.org or throw up a post at forums.mxlinux.org. This is Dolphin Oracle signing off. Have a great day.